Dr. Rubina, uh, you can please uh, stop sharing the poster. So I'll start now. Namaste to one and all. I would like to start with these lines. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and very dear. On behalf of Botany Department, myself, Dr. Madhurani, welcome you all to celebrate the cherished memories of our beloved Malik sir. We are here for third annual Dr. Dharmendra Kumar Malik Memorial Alumni Lecture. It's been three years now that cruel pandemic took away our humble, pure-hearted, passionate, hardworking, and always encouraging Malik sir from us. To start with, I would request Dr. Rubina to play the University Kulgeet. Jayati Jay Jay Jayati Jay Jay Gaan Ka Lok Anupam Shreshk Sundar Devya Dilli Vishwa Vidya Levi Hangam Jayati Jay Jay Jayati Jay Jay Gaan Ka Lok Anupam सकल वसुधा निज कुटुंब की भावना संस्कृति सनातन आधुनिक शिक्षा पुरातन ज्ञान धाराओं का संगम देश के स्वाधीनता हित भूमि का शत कोटि बंधन निष्ठा धृति सत्यम के मंगल दिव्य भावों का समागम जयति जय जय जयति जय जय ज्ञान का आलो भव्य महाविद्यालयों के परिसरों से चिर सुशोभित श्रेष्ठ गुरुजन कर रहे ने छात्र और छात्राएं देख सदचरित्र चार पावन साधना संकल्प सही नवल वैश्विक चेतना नव क्रांति संस्कारों का उद्गम जयति जय जय जयति जय जय ज्ञान का लोक अनुपम श्रेष्ठ सुंदर देव दिल्ली विश्व विद्यालय विहंगम जयति जय जय जयति जय जय ज्ञान का लोक अनुपम ज्ञान का आलोक अनुपम ज्ञान का आलोक अनुपम ज्ञान का आलोक अनुपम थैंक यू डॉक्टर रुबीना नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट आर टीचर इन चार्ज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर कुमार शांतनु फॉर वेलकम एड्रेस थैंक यू डॉक्टर मधु आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल यस वेरी मच a very good afternoon to one and all uh, today we have gathered to mark the third anniversary of the passing away of dr dharmendra kumar malik sir to honor his memories we have assembled today for dk malik memorial lecture this lecture has been instituted by the department of botany deshkandu college uh, dr malik was a teacher par excellence respected and loved by his colleagues for his noble nature he has made monumental contributions to many areas of academics by devoting his time towards research administrative responsibilities for the betterment of this institution guiding and mentoring students at all costs and being available to them even outside his working hours as senior faculty member of this department he always guided us with impeccable decisive abilities and as teacher in charge his contribution towards botany fraternity of deshpande college cannot be superseded today uh, we are fortunate to have dr monica jaggi with us 
who is one of the uh, many distinguished alumni of this department. Dr. Monica will deliver the third DK Malik Memorial Lecture. On behalf of Deshbandhu College, Department of Botany, I welcome each and everyone joined here. And I also extend my sense of gratitude to assemble and uh, to assemble here in the honor of memories of Dr. D.K. Malik, sir. Over to Dr. Uh, Madhurani, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Shantanu. Now, I would request our principal, sir, Professor Rajay Karwal, sir, to kindly address the gathering. Thank you, Dr. Madhu. A very good afternoon and namaste to all. Today's speaker, Dr. Madhika Jikri, faculty members from Bhakti and other esteemed guests from other institutions and dear students. On behalf of Deshmandu College and Bhakti Department of the College, a very warm welcome to you all for the third annual Dr. D.K. Malik Memorial Alumni Lecture to celebrate the memories of our beloved Dr. Dhanidu Malik. We gather here today to remember and honor the life of Dr. D.K. Malik, a remarkable individual, an outstanding teacher and researcher who touched the lives of so many. Today, we gather not only to mourn our loss, but also to celebrate the legacy that he has left behind. Dr. Malik was a person who personified the very essence of kindness, compassion, and dedication. His presence in our life was a true gift, and his impact will be forever engraved in our hearts and minds. I sincerely and specially welcome today's alumni speaker, Dr. Monica Jaggi, Principal Scientist, CSIR NISPER, to deliver a talk on the topic, Communicating Science, Bridging the Gap Between Science and Society. A warm welcome to Professor Kamal Kumar Gupta, Vice Principal, Deshbandhu College, IQSC Coordinator, Dr. Aditya Saxena, Dr. Kumar Shantnu, uh, Teacher in Charge, Botany Department, Event Coordinators, Dr. Bela Bhatia and Dr. Madhuran. Friends, science has the power to transform our lives, revolutionize industries, and tackle the most pressing challenges facing humanity. However, however for science to truly fulfill the its potential, it must transcend into the confines of laboratories and academic journals. It must be embraced, the understood by wider public, as it is the collective understanding and support of society that fuels scientific progress. This is a topic that lies at the heart of progress and understanding, the importance of bridging the gaps between the science and society. One of the key obstacles in bridging this gap is the communication barrier. As scientists, we have a responsibility to collectively communicate our findings in a way that is accessible, relatable, and engaging. To bridge this gap, we must prioritize science communication. It is not enough to simply simplify, conduct ground-taking research. We must also share our discoveries, insights, and knowledge with the broader community. Science communication encom encompasses various forms, from public lectures and educational outreach programs to engaging with the media and utilizing digital platforms. To achieve effective science communications, we need to invest in science education and literacy. By enhancing science education at all levels, we empower individuals to understand scientific concepts evaluate evidence critically, and make informed decisions. Ultimately, bridging the gaps between science and society is not just a responsibility. It is an opportunity to shape a better, better future. Science has the potential to address global challenges such as climate change, public health crisis, and technological advancements. By fostering a scientifically informed society, we can make more informed choices support evidence-based policies, and collectively work towards a sustainable and equitable world. We are fortunate to have such an accomplished researcher and invited alumni, Dr. 
Malika Jaggi amongst us to discuss about the scientific communication. We look forward for more insights on this topic from her. Thank you for accepting the invitation to deliver the lecture today and for guiding our students for new beginnings and career opportunities. This event is special as it is memorial lecture and secondly, for the successful completion of 70 years of our college with NIRF ranking 28 and recently NAC A++ grade with CGPA 3.65. One of the main aims of this college foundation is to offer excellent opportunities to the students. Also, this college is the best platform to showcase skills, knowledge, and ability. My best wishes for the body department for this and other upcoming events. Let us remember Dr. Malik with gratitude and love. May his legacy serve as guiding light, and may we never forget the profound impact of Dr. Malik had on our lives. Thank you very much. My best wishes for this program. Thank you so much, sir, for encouraging words. I would now request uh, Professor Kamal Kumar Gupta, sir, our vice principal, to say a few words. Sir, kindly unmute. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. I think you must be able to unmute now. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madhu. Uh, my appreciation to Botany Department for having this. Uh, in Dharmendra Malik uh, Memorial Series, uh, Memorial Talk Series. And this is the third talk in a series. Uh, first of all, I remember uh, on this occasion, Dr. Dharmendra Malik, who was a very, very dear friend to me, a wonderful teacher, excellent researcher, thorough gentleman, and a very good human being. He was always approachable to all the students, all the teachers, always a smiling persona. And as we know that during COVID, uh, he was no more with us. But at the same time, my appreciation to the botany department, what best can be done to a teacher that to have a memorial lecture series. And again, if this memorial lecture series if, is from the students, that is the best reward a teacher can get in the life. So, and the two-day talk, uh, Dr. Monica Jaggi, who is a, a proud alumnus of Deshmandu College, Botany Department. So that is a real finest remembrance to a holy soul. Now, I, on this occasion, I welcome Dr. Monica Jaggi, Principal Scientist, CSIR NISPAR, Professor Rajiv Agarwal, Principal Deshmandu College, Teacher in Charge, Dr. Kumar Shantanu, IQSC coordinator, Dr. Aditya Saxena, event coordinator, Dr. Bila Bhatia, and Dr. Madhu for hosting such an event. So my praise, appreciation, and welcome to everyone. Now about science communication, as Professor Rajiv Agarwal just mentioned, the importance of communication. And as a person of life science, I always say, the real breakthrough in the life sciences was through the communication. Everyone right from single cell till human being communicate. But is the communication sufficient? Probably not. Effective, correct communication is very, very important. And when we are entering, we are in the domain of science, the first of all, whatever we want to communicate should be correct, accurate, and effective. So that is what is the need. And uh, of course, Professor Rajiv Agarwal has already spoken a lot of things about this. And we have an uh, expert in this field, Dr. Monica Jaggi. So I think I will stop here and give a platform back to Madhu. Thank you. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you so much, sir. We definitely always feel Malik's blessings and love around us. It feels like he is with us through his words and his preachings. And today we are very fortunate and obliged to have with us our proud alumnus, Dr. Monica Jaggi, to deliver this memorial talk. And the topic for talk is communicating science, bridging the gap between science and society. Although Dr. Monica Jaggi is one of our own, fondly associated with Malik sir and all of us. And she has been joining us time and again for family reunion. 
but as the occasion demands i feel greatly privileged for this opportunity to introduce dr jaggi to the gathering dr monica jaggi is a plant biotechnologist working at the intersection of plant sciences science communication and diplomacy she is currently working as principal scientist at the national institute of science communication and policy research india where she leverages her plant science research background for scientific editing of two publications science diplomacy which is india's global digest for of multidisciplinary sciences and indian journal of fiber and textile research she obtained her phd in plant sciences from national institute of plant genome research new delhi india she did her graduation from deshwantu college her post graduation and mphil from department of botany university of delhi currently the sphere of her scientific interest cover a broad spectrum of research teaching journal editing science communication and science diplomacy dr jaggi is among a few young indian scientists working in the domain of science diplomacy she has been intricately associated with planning and organizing several national and international events on science communication overall her research efforts have resulted in multiple research articles book chapters reviews and popular science articles she is a proud alumnus of the uh, this uh, institute and she is also associated uh, with the american association for the advance of sciences the world academy of sciences science diplomacy training program italy and also sao paulo school on science and innovation diplomacy brazil without further ado i now invite dr monica jaggi to deliver her talk thank you dr madhu uh, before i start i would like to thank professor rajiv agarwal principal uh, deshwantu college uh, dr kamal vice principal uh, deshwantu college dr aditya saxena dr shantanu you dr bela bhatia i could see many uh, respected teachers who have taught me during my graduation days uh, faculty members from other colleges of the university and uh, my dear uh, students uh, i also had an opportunity to work with uh, madik sir uh, in 2013 and no doubt he was a great human being and we indeed um, in fact the department and the college indeed um, miss uh, that great human being and a great teacher in the department uh, so to begin with i would uh, let me share my screen as the title of my topic clearly suggests that it is the communicating science bridging the gap between science and society as uh, professor agarwal and uh, dr kamal already mentioned a brief about uh, science communication so here we will be starting with as we said the bridging the gap between science and society so what are the gaps we are trying to mention here and how can Uh, as a science communicator as a scientist as a teacher even as a science students we can help in bridging those gaps many times in newspapers you come across such kind of news for example ganesha idols drinking milk water around the haji ali dargah turning sweet water oozing out from the feet of an idol of christ or a uh, idol or tabis coming out of the ground so these are you know some of the uh, what i say uh, the information which are obviously these are just myths rumors and they have no scientific basis about that but despite knowing this the people they many a times fall into these traps and it is not about only such kind of news in the covid 19 also we came across many such rumors fake information false information misinformation for example covid-19 vaccine generates magnetic properties in human body there were news or information like putting lemon loaf on uh, juice up the nose will kill the corona virus or keeping those cloves cardamom camphor and mace in the pocket will keep the corona virus away so these are some of the examples which indicate the kind of uh, you know Uh, communication challenges or the gaps we face in the society later on 
when vaccination started there were many people especially in the rural areas where they were reluctant to getting uh, being vaccinated because according to them vaccination is dangerous it can lead to impotency and it may lead to further complications etc so these are some of the examples which indicate the need for science communication in our society and with coming years it is becoming more and more uh, uh, crucial so to before going on to why science communication let's begin with why communication itself why communication is so important it is indeed important at which is the reason for human progress as we all are aware that it is not only humans but even animals also communicate though human beings have developed this art of communicating through gestures sound languages text pictures and hadn't been this communication among human beings their ability to share knowledge their ability to share information innovate and invent they wouldn't have moved out of caves if we look at the history of human beings we have a long history of almost 1 lakh years and major part of that is spent in caves for a long time humans they lived as nomads they were hand- hunters gatherers and it is only about 10000 years ago they settled down with agriculture so from 1 lakh years to 10000 years it's a long era but that era was of very slow changes but now if we look at the modern era it is rapidly evolving if we look at the printing press or the first uh, first electric motor they are uh, invented hardly a few hundred years ago and if we look at the invention of computers internet mobile phones the space technology nuclear energy they have been discovered just within our own lifetime and rather though it has its own advantages but it has also some disadvantages which i'll be talking about in later slides so it has basically led to an information explosion we now create it would be assuming uh, very interesting to know that we now create as much as information in two days the amount which we created in past like we did from the dawn of the human is uh, still 2003 so now the amount of information which we are generating is at a, it is expanding at a rapid rate and in that it becomes difficult even for experts also to filter which information is real or which information is fake according to a study in 2021 by the international federation of library association and institutions during the pandemic social media was the biggest producer of misinformation accounting for 85% of it and 91% of all covid fake news were internet based and if we talk about data in terms of countries india is the biggest source followed by brazil and the usa the amount of misinformation is also the highest in india followed by the usa and brazil science communication here comes the need for science communication it is essential if we look at the general definition of science communication it is basically creating uh, awareness among the masses making people aware of the scientific developments which are occurring throughout the world it is essential for us to communicate those scientific findings with the society and other branches of sciences beyond conceptual framework when i talk about conceptual framework and language barriers basically science communication it has two components one is outreach and one is in reach outreach is basically dissemination to non experts the general public which who are not very well versed with the scientific concepts and in reach is the expert to expert interaction or the communication here those experts can be interdisciplinary 
maybe a biologist can talk to a chemist and they come up with some collaboration and invent a new medicine or a new vaccine for the treatment so in science communication we have both components outreach as well as in uh, in reach and in outreach it can be done through science fairs science writing and in the modern era even youtube creators podcasts short videos are also playing a crucial role and we have actually a social responsibility to communicate science there are reasons why should we as a human being not only as a science practitioner but as a citizen also we have that responsibility to communicate science especially for scientists or the teachers who are in this field of sciences they have a sense of obligation towards the taxpayer money in india and in fact many developed countries the science is being funded by the taxpayers money there are a few developing countries for example usa or europe where the private industries they also fund the research r&d in those countries but in india maximum funding is being done from the government funds which is actually taxpayers money so when we are spending taxpayers money on our research it becomes our duty as well as responsibility to inform the general public where their money is going what kind of research are we doing and what are the implications benefits of that research to the general public so other than funding many people they communicate as a need as a hobby and um, there are a few uh, people who communicate for their personal development they go through the latest research which is ongoing throughout the world and then they bring that they convert that information into or they simplify that complex information into the simplified manner and then they communicate it to the public and the advantages or the biggest benefit of science communication or biggest reason that why should we communicate is to inculcate scientific temper among the citizens when they are aware of the latest developments which are ongoing they are able to make well informed decisions for example if we talk about genetically modified food or we talk about nuclear energy pollution etc if people are aware of that if that particular variety is released whether actually it is beneficial for us or it is harmful to us whether it has any advantages or disadvantages how is it impacting the environment similarly if a power nuclear power plant is coming up in the area so the people who are residing near that area if they are well informed about that nuclear power plant they will be able to make well informed decisions otherwise they will be reluctant to use that advantages of that technology which is being offered to us by the scientists so to have to make well informed decisions it is quite essential for the citizens of a country to be well informed well aware of the latest developments which are ongoing and it is not something new which is happening there have been efforts being efforts were there before the independence also but after independence more efforts are being uh, taken up to popularize science among the uh, citizens in india our first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru he introduced the concept of modern scientific temper what do you mean by scientific temper it is just the curiosity to know about other things which are happening around us without being biased without listening to what for example solar eclipse or the vaccine if we talk about in the latest time that it is just not that by listening to what is what rumors are floating on the social media we need to go into the depth we need to understand what exactly is the truth so that curiosity to know the truth or the fact behind that information is the scientific temper in fact in our uh, in the constitution of india in part 4a of the article 51a it is clearly mentioned 
that it shall be the duty of every citizen of india to develop scientific temper humanism and spirit of inquiry and reform so far there are four science and technology policy statements which have been issued time to time and recently the fifth uh, science technology and innovation policy is also in process the draft of which was released in late 2020 and among all those technologies special mention has been a special effort has been put on spreading scientific awareness popularizing science and technology and building scientific temper in the effort to promote or to popularize science the indian government they initiated various programs for example they established organizations like the community science center which was later renamed vikram a sarabhai community science center in ahmedabad with the sole aim of popularizing science later in 1970s we mark the establishment of the national council of science museums today we have 26 science centers and museums spread all over india and it was again one of the first conscious conscious efforts to popularize science in the country later in 1980s another uh, unit was established by department of science technology uh, national council for science and technology communication which is nctc which conducted various training programs it also spread or disseminate information of science communication uh, through video and radio programs by publishing books popular science magazines in fact in 19 late 1980s and early 90s one of the biggest science communication experiment was held in the india by the name of vigyan jathas if you remember if you recall that in late 1980s and 90s there were no internet there was no computers or uh, mobile phones so the only mode of communication was either via print media or the radio or television so during that time nctc they conducted vigyan jathas where science communicators they marched in groups across 40000 locations in about 400 uh, districts interacting with local people and spreading information about science and technology developments which were relevant to their day to day lives besides ncstc also organizes annual children science congress as well as national science congress to promote outreach as well as in reach efforts this is just a brief overview i am uh, giving about the science communication beginning with why science communication how has it uh, uh, how is it important and how various efforts being done in the past to promote science in the uh, citizens and what is required in the future so besides nccstc vigyan prasar is another organization set up by department of science and technology in 1989 which also coordinates efforts among various scientific institutions educational and academic bodies laboratories museums industry and other organization for effective exchange and dissemination of scientific information it also uh, develops and disseminates software materials and organizes science workshops conferences debates lectures competitions etc to promote communication among different uh, from people from different walks of life other than that national book trust of india is another organization but it is mainly into publishing books etc so it publishes general reading material for all segments of society and for all age groups these books are moderately priced and includes fiction non fiction informative books on a variety of subjects and in not only in english or hindi but other indian languages also it organizes book fairs the new delhi world book fair is the largest book fair in asia and africa which is being organized by national book trust every year and it also brings out a series of books on popular science uh, 
coming on to my institute national institute of science communication and policy research it is one of the 37 units of csir i'm not sure about uh, among our students how many of them are aware of this council of scientific and industrial research csir which is among the top research institutions organizations in india most of you have gone for voting. Jab aap log vote karne jate hai, you put that indelible ink on your uh, index finger. That ink is the contribution of National Physical Laboratory, which is among those 37 laboratories uh, of CSIR. So similarly, uh, NISPER, National Institute of Science Communication and Policy Research, is also in the domain of science communication for past seven decades. Though that term nomenclature has gone through various changes, beginning from publication and information directorate in 1951 to National Institute of Science Communication and Policy Research in 2021, but it has a long legacy of 70 years in the field of science communication. And it is the largest institute in the country engaged in science communication and dissemination of scientific information. It is the insti only institute in the country that publishes 15 peer-reviewed research journals covering the major disciplines of science and technology, ranging from physics to radio physics, chemistry to chemical technology, experimental biology to biotechnology, and even intellectual property rights to traditional knowledge. It provides a platform for researchers to publish their research achievements as per the international standards. And all those, all these journals, they are available in open access and they don't have any academic publication charges. Besides, NISPER also uh, publishes three popular science magazines, Vigyan Pragati, which is a monthly publication in Hindi. It started in 1952. Science Reporter in English, which started in 1964. And Science Ki Dunya, which is a quarterly publication in Urdu language, which uh, started in 1975. Today, we have we are the largest circulating popular science magazines in the country, which aims to spread scientific awareness, it gives coverage to Indian scientific developments, motivate children to take up science, encourage budding science writers. And all these uh, popular science magazines, they are also available online. Here, I would like to mention, as we have written, as, I, as you can read in this slide, that we motivate children to take up science and uh, encourage budding science writers. Here, I would like to mention that even school students and college students also contribute to these magazines. So if there are any students, uh, botany students or life sciences students or any science student, who are interested in writing, they are most welcome to write to these magazines. And in the previous slides, the institutes which I have mentioned, the, uh, they also have a number of magazines, science magazines, which cover these topics. So those who are interested, they can write to go in, they can contribute to those magazines also. So it is, as I mentioned, it is a duty of each one of us being a scientist, being a teacher, being a science student, or even being a citizen to create efforts to disseminate science, the latest developments, the latest technology developments which are happening, and to break the myths, to find out or to uh, go into depth and clear the uh, myths which we are having in the society. In uh, addition to that, NISPER also publishes low-priced, well-illustrated science books, which cover topics on, for example, cell and genes, computers, artificial intelligence, atom and materials, space technology, stars. And all these books, they provide in-depth information on complex scientific topics in lucid language, which are easy to understand. Golden Treasury of Science and Technology is another publication uh, of the Institute, which is in, to its third reprint. R&D newsletters, uh, 
CSIR NISPER uh, publishes two R&D newsletters, one in English and another in Hindi, um, as CSIR News and CSIR Samachar. They serve as a link among the various CSIR establishments. As I mentioned that CSIR has 37 laboratories in the country. So these uh, newsletters, they showcase achievements of CSIR labs to other R&D organizations, universities, SNT agencies, industries, mass media, foreign missions, etc. And both of uh, both these publications are also monthly. So far, I was talking about the print media, but other than that, also we have a multimedia uh, division in uh, at NISPER, which creates documentaries on CSIR laboratories. They also cover special events like science conferences, Indian and international science festivals, or the latest technologies, small video programs on individual technology of a laboratory. In past, Eureka was a program which was uh, 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 telecasted on Rajya Sabha TV in collaboration with Vikyan Prasad. And Scientific Years was another uh, multimedia production of CSI and ISPAR with Vikyan Prasad, which was telecasted on Doordarshan. There are different ways of communication. So far, I was discussing the print and the multimedia. But nowadays, as I mentioned, the technology is uh, expanding. People are becoming more aware. There was a time when people had time to spend on newspaper. But with changing times, there is hardly any time for anyone to spend on newspapers. Younger generations, especially, they are more hooked to Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. And their attention span time is also quite less. So in modern era, it is required that we change the pattern or we change the methodology of science communication. So here again, our younger generation can play a crucial role. They can write blogs, they can create podcasts, they can also have uh, create web video, uh, videos or short form videos and they can have their own community on social media. They can have their own YouTube channel where they can bring the newer concepts. They can communicate with the general public. Nowadays, as I mentioned, there are reels or small videos which play an important role. Short and crisp videos, but conversing with the masses the only thing which they need to be careful is that they should not be a part of a spreading false information. So it is a big responsibility when it comes to science communication, as mentioned by Dr. Kamal sir also uh, in his opening remarks, that that information should be authentic. It should be genuine. It should be simplified. And here, young scientists can play a crucial role. We need the, our institutes, our country, we need young scientists in the domain of science communication. Other than young scientists, we also need the participation of scientists and teachers. Yes, my dear faculty members, I also invite you to bring, to be a part of these science communication efforts. As a researcher, as a scientist, as a teacher, it is our responsibility to participate in popularizing science. And it is not necessary that we need to have writing skills. Those who have pub, uh, this public speaking skills, they can use that uh, skill also for popularizing science. And again, it is not only that we are going on a bigger platform to communicate science, even in your society, even among your peers, if you come across some myth, some false information, some fake information, which you know that, yes, it is not correct. There is a scientific basis behind it. So you as a citizen, it is your responsibility to create that awareness among those people. It could be our family members also. So we need to have that feeling of responsibility to communicate science. And as an effective communicator, it is also helpful in benefiting your career also. 
most of the effective communicator are they are successful scientists uh, successful scientists also as i mentioned that science is increasingly becoming interdisciplinary so they should be you know we have to have that if we have the ability to communicate effectively across disciplines so it can lead to further collaborations and innovations being able to communicate the relevance and impact of ideas and discoveries can also enable them to secure funding it also helps in building support for science promotes understanding of wider relevance to society encourages more informed decision making at all levels from government to communities to individuals so as you see science communication is playing an essential role in the building of nation wherever there are more science communicators there that uh, that nation is more developing or it is more developed as i mentioned in the initial slides that during covid times it was the india was the leader which is not a good thing in spreading false information or in generating fake information or in uh, spreading misinformation so in such a big uh, country we need more science communicators with such a small group of science communicators it is not possible to communicate science to a wide public in different languages so i request and i invite all my dear students my faculty members to uh, communicate in through various means be it social media be it science writing be it through podcasts through blogs use any means which you feel comfortable with but try to bring that information which you know that science which you know try to disseminate it to the society with this i would end my talk thank you so much if you have any doubts any questions you are most welcome and you can connect me through either my email id or you can also uh, directly follow me on twitter thank you so much over to you madhu uh thank you dr monica now dr anjay shibba uh, ma'am will take over yes thanks dr monica for such an insightful and interesting talk uh, on science communication um, because it is the need and responsibility for personality development you know we were too much engrossed in that uh, and it is so very useful for the students today uh, to be uh, open to science i mean more they communicate more uh, versatile they will be so uh, uh if you uh, permit we can take one or two queries from our participants one is uh dr madhurani uh, she is saying that uh, if uh, please guide our students how they can contribute articles in these magazines okay uh for example if we talk about nispar publication so we have science reporter and vigyan prathi uh, pragati So you can go to our uh, website. There you have uh, the detailed information about these magazines. What should be the length of that article which you are trying to frame? Uh, the topics also you can get, get an idea. And there is the email ID of the editor. So they can send their articles to the to the uh, editor directly, and they'll get back to the concerned person directly. and similarly for other organizations also most of them they have these uh, magazines or uh, the details about these magazines on their uh, websites so uh, the students or the interested uh, persons they can directly go to the websites check the link and then uh, write directly to the editor of that particular uh, magazine uh, i would like 
I also wanted to ask, is there any criteria for checking the credibility or uh, like uh, paid to the writers or to the authors? So depending upon the length of article, so it's like a freelancer writing also for the students, like if they are interested to write. OK, thank you, Dr. Monica. Uh, if amongst our audience, anybody else wants to ask any questions, you are free to ask. We can unmute you. OK, with that, thank you so much, Dr. Monica. Uh, I, could, for... I could see one query by Dr. Arunjit. Okay. Is the data to publish can be literature review type also? So it depends if you are writing uh, for, I'm not clear about the question, but if you are writing about the research journals, so definitely there that has to be a complete article. But if you're talking about popular, uh, popular science, where you are trying to communicate with the general masses, so there it has to be in a popular science format in the simple a language there should not be any jargons there should there should not be too much complicated data if there is that data it has to be simplified so that information should be in a lucid language it should be in a simplified manner which should be easily understandable by the general public for example you cannot talk about archegoniety to the general public you'll have to break that information. You have to simplify that information. For example, if you are talking to a general uh, a common student about uh, nanometer. So if you tell, to, uh, tell uh, him or her that uh, one nanometer is 10 to the power minus nine meter, so that person won't understand. But if you tell that that is, that even that mm, these many times thinner than your human hair, so then it will be easily understandable to that particular person. So you have to break that complicated information into simplified. Thank you, Monica. Uh, one more query is there. Uh, that's for our, from our own student, uh, Ram, who is again an alumnus of our college. Uh, Ram says that even being uh, exposed to information through various media, and even though the students, they are ignorant more rather than following about the science and indulged in, uh, as you mentioned, in social uh, sites, etc. So how we can take it up? Um, can you repeat, repeat in the sense, can you, uh, what exactly does? Ram, should I unmute you? I think so your question is not very clear. I'll unmute you. You can ask the question. Okay. Madhubam, you can uh, do that if possibly you can see. Okay. Uh, if I... Yes, we have allowed him to unmute. Please. Um, there is a query in the chat box that please let us know how can we motivate and what can be done to motivate and stimulate them to work thing in this direction. As I mentioned, one of the ways is, uh, uh, I would like to give an example here that how can uh, even scientists are using this science communication thing to get more of followers. And most of the time, is an Israeli uh, scientist, Ode Trikavi, who has a very big following. He uses that uh, following to create awareness. He brings about various concepts about science uh, on his uh, uh, social media platforms. And he uses that social media platform. And uh, for example, uh, YouTube, if we were talking about YouTube, if you have your channels, if you have a more number of subscribers, they pay you like monetary uh, thing can be one of the ways to attract younger students, uh, not the scientists. Or, but uh, for example, for scientists and for uh, teachers also, nowadays, 
uh, government uh, they uh, give incentives or they uh, give awards to people who are in the field of uh, science communication uh, if we fill up forms for assistant professor positions there are uh, different uh, special points for writing popular uh, articles if we uh, ncstc one of the organizations which i mentioned in my talk it also has awards for science communicators where they give uh, award um, of uh, i don't remember the uh, exact prize money but uh, one lakh or above to those science communicators so uh, these th uh, these uh, the science communication it has its own like benefits for both professional as well as your personal growth i hope i addressed his uh, Question. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Manika. I think so. There are no more queries. Uh, so, thank you so much for delivering uh, such a valuable talk uh, to communicate that that science communication is not only for funding we take it up, but one may communicate as a hobby too. So, thank you very much. It was our pleasure to listen to you. Uh, now, here we present. a memento and a certificate as a token of appreciation to you uh, so please accept them with a very special thanks from us thank you so much thank you thank you so much ma'am and thanks to the uh, teacher in charge as well as the organizing committee uh, for inviting me to deliver this lecture it is indeed a privilege for me to come to my alma mater and Uh, makes create some awareness about science communication among the students and i hope some of them may take up this future prospects it is a, uh, one of the upcoming avenues in the uh, many startups private industries are uh, looking for the science communicators there are various institutes also which are recruiting science communicators in their institute to popularize science so if they have any queries they are most welcome to write to me at on my email id thank you thank you dr monica and thanks dr ubina for uh, presenting the memento and the certificate now i request dr bela bhatia to give a formal formal vote of thanks thank you over to thank you dr, dr. bela thank you so much dr anju good afternoon everyone i dr bela bhatia on behalf of department of botany teshpandu college sincerely thank all of you all the teachers students alumni and other participants for joining us today to pay our tribute to dr dk malik whom we lost during the pandemic a remarkable human being and a teacher par excellence Dr Malik will be fondly remembered by all those who have come in contact with him our special thanks are due to principal professor rajiv agrawal for his support and encouragement in all our endeavors we express our gratitude to our vice principal professor kamal kumar gupta for sparing his time and joining us today thanks are also due to dr aditya saxena our iqac coordinator for his unwavering support we humbly thank our student and alumnus dr monika jaggi for joining us today and delivering a talk befitting to the occasion our best wishes to dr monika for a bright future our heartfelt thanks are due to all the colleagues students and other participants from various institutions who have joined us today to remember dr dk malik last but not the least we extend our gratitude to our technical team without whom it would not have been possible to organize this program thanks to all of you
uh, before ending the session, a humble request to all the participants to kindly switch on their camera so that we can have a, a screenshot for memories. Thank you, everyone. Shall we end the meeting now? Yes, madam.